Hey, don't rage quit bro here. I'll try to make this a fairly short video, as it's just an update to the previous build guide. Link to that video can be found in the description below. First I want to showcase why Herald of Purity is underrated in my opinion. In the clip that you see now, I'm running a T16 minus max alleyways and run into one of the new Scourge bosses. He just stands there attacking the Heralds, and all I have to do is just sidestep every now and then. Note, if you do get sucked in with his tentacle grab, you have to dash out quick, or else his slam will one-shot, even with this much life and energy shield. As for the build, the concept is still the same. Attribute stacking energy blades, arc inquisitor, though I've made some upgrades and adjustments. So let's talk about the passive tree changes. I got up to 100% crit standing in hideout, so I no longer had a need for the mastery that makes damage with non-crits lucky. Additionally, this meant I now no longer had a use for Storm Rider for power charges. This influenced me to ditch the Megalomaniac altogether. I'll put a list of the masteries I'm currently taking in the description below, as some people have mentioned it wasn't loading properly on their POB. I got rid of the Lightning Passive Cluster on top of which, and went towards Shadow, picking up a couple more regular jewels, as well as some crit and life and ES clusters, and manually specking utmost intellect. This brings us to our gear upgrades. On the shield I picked up a higher ES roll, and you'll notice it has some spell crit on there too. The gloves are still Shaper's Touch, though we'll be getting a Corrupted Implicit now. If you do not have capped spell crit already, pick up spell crit for the Implicit. And if you are capped, pick up a plus two to aura or AOE gems to boost your auras a little bit more. The chest piece is just a high ES roll with suffix available for percent attributes and I got a T2 percent ent on it as well. As for the belt, I went with full strength and attribute stacking and this is actually more energy shield than our previous one due to how much we are stacking attributes and thanks to Shaper's Touch for helping our strength to give us energy shield as well. The boots we're just looking for as high as possible energy shield with movement speed with some resin attributes. Ideally I'd want to get a percent strength roll on here as well. The rings are just attributes and resistances mostly, nothing special going on here. We're still using Astramentus, but as we are manually specking utmost intellect, we can switch the anoint to utmost might. The helmet we grabbed an extra chain on arc, and I do have a secondary helmet just for Maven and Cyrus, which gives Unnerve, making them take 10% more damage. We lose one chain for the swap, but here's some math for those who like it. When on a single target, for each remaining chain left, we increase the damage by 15%, and we currently have 10 chains. If we theoretically hit for 1000 damage, and we have 10 chains left, this means 150% more damage aka a total of 2500 damage. If we hit for 1000 damage and have 9 chains left, this is 135% more damage, or 2350. But the enemy takes 10% more, so we add 10% of this, 235, giving us 2585 total. This obviously isn't huge, but hey, free damage is free damage. And a couple of minor changes to flasks, I did pick up a Netziri's Promise and a Rumi's Concoction, both of them are pretty cheap, and then I just got the uh, Sulfur, the Quicksilver, and the Life Flask. I find I move my Minor Pantheon around a bit depending on map, for example if the map has Burning I'll put on Aberath, Shock Ground, I'll put on Garukan, and Caustic Ground I'll put on Shikari. I never really change the major as it's an easy way to mitigate Frozen and eliminates the possibility of getting stun locked. Now lastly, if you stayed this long, one of my favorite mapping strats in Path of Exile, Nim 3 Juiced. I haven't got all of my watchstones set up just how I want yet, so don't criticize the map choice or anything, but here's an example map. I ran T15, Delied, Scarabed, Sextanded, Nimi, Beyond, Scourge Tier 10. This build is 100% viable without a headhunter to clear in-game juiced maps without issue. Two map mods specifically I don't run is Ellie Reflect and No Regen. Everything else is doable, but if there's Ellie Weakness, I'll gem swap Wrath to Purity of Elements. 
On this example map, the main Scourge mod to pay attention to is take physical damage equal to 0.2%. What this means is I have to be diligent about going into Nightmare Realm as soon as it's available, or else I'll die within a couple of seconds if I don't. I'll leave you guys with a minute or so of juiced Scourge map gameplay. And yes, I have done Maven and Cyrus with this build, though they weren't deathless and I made a couple embarrassing mistakes, like flame dashing directly into a storm from Cyrus or into a laser beam from Maven. But maybe I'll make a, another video on that if there's enough interest for it. Anyways, enjoy the rest of the video and have a nice day. Must have time to gather the world. 